I've always been a big fan of Valve's hardware, from the Steam controller to the Steam Link, and you guessed it, finally got my hands on the Steam Deck. Let's check it out. This is the way it came shipped, in just a brown box, and if you notice right here, it actually says it's from Valve Corporation. Pretty cool. On the side of it, you're going to notice a couple things. You got the companion cube. You got the package handler loving the box like it's a companion cube. On the back of it, obviously there's like a lithium ion battery thing because this has a pretty big battery inside of it, which it should because it's pretty much a portable gaming computer. Time to open it. It's been a long time that I've been waiting for this. I put my reservation to buy it months and months and months ago. Oh wow on a ferris wheel oh it just tells you where you can play it like in a test chamber in the car in the train in the kitchen that's very cool the first thing we're greeted with is this giant card right here it says plug it in and power it on super easy super simple and uh sd card slot uh the steam button and uh this button right here oh man this is gonna be cool all right, we're gonna get to this, but let's check out the other thing that comes with. And this is the 64 gigabyte version. This is like the base level. All right, what is this? I'm sure this is the power brick. And again, it looks like a companion cube kind of thing, <laughs> except it's got a little lightning bolt there. I'm loving it. And it just looks like a nice power brick. It doesn't look like it's like a removable cord. It's just the power brick itself to a USB-C. And it looks like it comes with the Steam Deck manual in all the languages. Very cool. And now for the main course. Your games are going places. They got the nice holographic text on there. Designed by Valve Corporations. Contents, video game machine, and a case. Even the 64 gigabyte version comes with a case, which is wonderful. So you can really just chuck it in a backpack and not really worry about it. Oh, this is cool. It's a big, it's a long thing. Okay, nice. Yeah, this is, I guess, the Steam Deck logo. So this is the case itself. Oh, wow, there's like a little, it's like a divot here. What are you putting here? Oh, maybe this. I think that's it. You put the little power cord in there. That's actually really good design. I'm happy with that. The case, it's made of a nice feeling material. It's got a nice rigidness to it. Like it's actually pretty rigid. So I'm not worried about knocking it around when it's inside of here. It's got a nice handle on it. So you can kind of carry it around like a little briefcase. On the zippers, it looks like there's a tiny little <laughs> valve tag on here. The zippers are metal, but they also have like a rubberized grippy coating on the end of it, which is nice. But the base of it is metal. So we got to open this up. There we go. It's such a cute little tag, I like it. And if you notice on the zippers as well, it's got like a luggage lock. Like if you're feeling like you wanna lock it up or something, you can put a little lock between it, which is cool, nice little option. All right, time to open up and see. Boom. Look at this thing. It's big. <laughs> it's big. Oh, wow. It's lighter than I thought from looking at it. Oh man, this thing is gonna be cool. I hope it doesn't pick up a lot of fingerprints. Interesting. The first thing I have to say is interesting. All right. It looks like the case also has this little white string here. So you can make it easy to lift and take it out of here. But we're interested in the Steam Deck itself. So let's get this case out of here. There's not really much else going on with it. So this is the Steam Deck itself. And the first thing I'm gonna say is, it's very ergonomic. It fits in your hands nicely. There's no question of how you're gonna hold it. There's like these nice big shoulder grips right here or hand grips. It feels nice. Another thing I'm gonna say is, it's big. It's like a big, long thing. It's definitely not something you can throw in your pocket. It's not like an old Game Boy or something. This is a big old unit itself. And this is pretty much supposed to be like replacing a computer of sorts because Steam, if you know, is uh, PC games mostly. And so this is gonna be running most PC games, like AAA games, which is pretty impressive for a handheld. 
On the left side, we're going to notice we have a joystick and it feels very smooth and it does have a click down. We have a D-pad that feels like it's right off the edge of it, like it's almost falling off the edge, but it actually doesn't feel bad at all. And it feels comfortable because sometimes D-pads are like squished down here and you have to hold your thumb kind of at like a weird angle. But here, this is where my thumb would normally be. So it's actually really nice that they put it there. It uh, looks like maybe a picture picture button here. I'm not really sure what that is. And I believe these are trackpads similar to the Steam controller. It looks like we have the Steam button right here and it looks like one of the speaker holes. And on the right side on the front, we have a similar kind of setup, except instead of a D-pad, we have some buttons, A, B, X, Y. On the back of the Steam Deck, we're going to notice it says a valve on it right in the middle there. There's also, it looks like a cooling grill. There's also a whole bunch of triggers. We got the L1 and R1, the L2 and R2, L4 and R4, and L5 and R5. All of the time your hands on this controller, you're going to be just holding buttons and it feels nice. I'm going to have to get used to kind of buttons back there. The Steam controller had something like that, but it didn't have as many. And they feel very solid, not much wiggle room. This whole thing, the build quality feels honestly amazing. It doesn't feel like it's made of cheap plastic. It doesn't feel like anything's loose. It feels, it feels really good. On the bottom of the Steam Deck, we have a small little SD card slot, which is going to be great for external storage without having to open it up and tamper with it. On the top of the Steam Deck, we have some buttons right here. On the top left side of the Steam Deck, we have a minus and plus, which is probably for volume or brightness, I'm not really sure. It looks like a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, which is going to be perfect for headphones, probably microphone as well. A heat vent. There's probably an internal fan that will cool the system if it's really pumping out on a hard game or something. Looks like we have the USB-C for charging, and I believe you can do like uh, audio and video out and probably external storage, things like that. Probably a power indication light and then the power button itself. And that is all of the buttons and ports on the Steam Deck. Let's power this thing on and see how it goes. So we're going to plug it in. And if you notice, the little white light turns on when you plug it in. It decided to turn itself on, so we're just going to wait and see what happens. All right, first thing we're greeted with is the menu for language. Where is my time zone? And then your Wi-Fi, pick your Wi-Fi. After you connect to the Wi-Fi, it looks like it's installing some updates. So we're gonna go ahead and let it install. It says it's gonna take five minutes. While it's downloading and installing the updates, I'm gonna show you a couple comparisons to other systems I have that are handheld. One of them is this, the Game Boy SP. The SP is like, I think the perfect, most pocketable system. Is you can just fold it in half, throw it in your pocket. The Steam Deck, you can't really pocket it. I don't have a Switch. I assume it's similar size to the Switch, but I do have a PlayStation PSP. And if you can see, the PSP is like smaller than the screen itself. It's a little bit longer than the screen. And in case you want one more comparison, here's a Magic Card. <laughs> it's a whole bunch of Magic Cards. But yeah, it's a pretty big system. I would not consider this pocketable. You could definitely throw it in a little backpack, a little handheld thing. You got the case for it. You can lug it around, but it's not really something you can throw in your pocket. But it is going to be something portable that you can take with you and game on the go, which is pretty much why I got it. There is the slightest little noise from the fan, and I can feel a little bit of cool breeze coming out from the top of it. One thing I want to say is underneath the Steam Deck, there's a bit of room. So like you could take a pencil and stick it underneath it. So there's always like good airflow coming from underneath it, even if it's laying down, which is nice. Oh, there it is. It's got noises now. And this is where you're going to want to enter in your Steam information. And I'm signed in. We're welcomed with a welcome to Steam Deck. And this is a touch screen, so you can tap the screen or just press any button. This is the Steam buttons. Press it to access library, store, and settings. This is the quick access button. Press it to quickly view notifications, friend list, quick settings, and more. Uh, up here is the power button. Over here is the volume. I skipped past that one. And then it lets you know that you got the SD card slot there. Have fun. Tap screen to continue. That's awesome. And it's just, it's literally my my steam account <laughs> it's there let's check out the viewing angles of this thing they're amazing <laughs> they're literally amazing
I'm geeking out a little bit. This is really cool. So I believe this is the type of big picture mode if you've ever used big picture. So you hit Steam, you got, you got the home, library, store, you can go to the store, grade on Steam Deck. There's a whole category for grade on Steam Deck. Not every game is compatible, but there is a big amount of compatible. Oh, I want to get stray. I haven't felt this way about a handheld console in a long time. We got a bunch of settings, so let's look at the settings. We can show the battery percentage. I would like to know the percentage of the battery. 24 hour clock, you can turn it on, you can change your time zone. This is all the general. This is info on the system. You got software updates. I'm gonna probably update in a second. OS update channel, the stable. I guess you can probably choose beta. Yep, nope. I'm gonna just keep it on stable. Steam Deck stable. Enable developer mode. Uh, I'll say yeah, why not? The CPU is at 2.8 gigahertz, which is pretty wild. It's got four physical cores, eight logical cores. You got like 14.49 uh, gigabytes of RAM, which is crazy. The video card is an AMD custom GPU. And you can reset the settings if you'd like. For security, you can put a little pin so if you lose your Steam Deck or no one can really access it unless they know the pin. Notifications, a whole bunch of things of notifications when you're going to get them. You got display, you got the brightness right here. You got night mode, probably changes the color settings a little bit. Dim display in 15 minutes, so you got kind of sleep settings. The audio stuff, you got the volume, which also you have the buttons up top. You got voice volume, so I guess there's a microphone somewhere in here. Bluetooth, so there is Bluetooth here if you'd like, so you attach some headphones or even maybe a Bluetooth mouse or something, or keyboard, which is cool. The controller, it's got game rumble, oh that's nice. There's rumble and haptics, so I guess there's an accelerometer in here. Keyboard settings right here, current keyboard theme. You can go ahead and get a different theme, which is fun. Haptics medium, you can change the sensitivity. Enable trigger click, trackpad sensitivity. You got friends in chat, you got downloads. You can limit your downloads or restrict updates to certain times. You can throttle downloads when streaming. You can stream from this thing, what? The cloud, enable Steam Cloud for your saves. You got family, you got remote play, you got storage. I got 42.3 gigabytes free of 46 gigabytes. The rest of the 64 gigabytes must be Steam OS data. This is where a micro SD card will come in handy for any games, or you can internally open this up and change out the drive, or you can just get a Steam Deck with larger storage on it. Got home stuff, show personalized data, got the library, add game to library, and then there's just a bunch of developer options right here. And that's all of the menu. So there's so many ways to navigate. You got the D-pad to navigate. You got the joystick to navigate. The right joystick doesn't navigate the text menu. Then you have both of the trackpads and you can use both of the trackpads at the same time or you can just straight up use the touch screen. This is the coolest thing ever. <laughs> I'm really liking this so far. If you hit the three little buttons right here, it opens up the menu for all of the system stuff like brightness, audio, the microphone, airplane mode, Wi-Fi, Bluetooth. Oh man, this thing is going to be great for traveling. This is so cool. I'm thinking of putting on a glass screen protector. Bing, bang, boom. I put that on there pretty nice. Let's put on a little micro SD card. Got myself a very tiny little 256 gigabyte micro SD card. Should be perfect for the Steam Deck. Put a bunch of games on there. And let's go ahead and install the SD card. They only fit in one way, and it looks like it is with the exposed pins facing down of the Steam Deck. And this is the hard part, clicking it in. No, no, it wasn't that hard. <laughs> there we go, and it sits very flush. It would be nice if they had it cover up, I'm not going to lie. That would have been cool if they had something you could like slide open, then click it out, then close it. That would be nice. Let's format our SD card. Steam Deck. Ooh, we hit an error while formatting your micro SD card. What does that mean? So it happened again. You saw right before your eyes, this was a brand new micro SD card that I just literally took out of the package and put it in here and tried to format it. And it's saying format error. So it did an error this time. I want to see if it shows up as storage. It shows up now. That was stupid. How I got it to work is I had to take my micro SD card out and go to my Windows computer. I then 
used a disk partition and I completely deleted the partition on the SD card so that it was just completely unallocated space. There was no file systems or anything on it. Then I took the unallocated micro SD card, I put it in the Steam Deck and then I click format in the menu on the Steam Deck and it seemed to work that way. For whatever reason, when I tried to format it on my Windows computer to any file system, NTFS or like FAT32 or XFAT, it didn't like that. But when I tried unallocated space by deleting the partition, it worked on the Steam Deck. Anyways, I hope that helped you, and I'm glad that it works. I was getting worried something was wrong, but kind of a weird problem. And Googling it for a little bit, it seems other people had that as well. But I'm glad that I got it to work. Let's try to install some games on it. In the meantime, while these are installing, let's check this out. I ended up getting myself a little case for it. It feels like I thought it would feel. It's like a tough rubber. And let's just, uh, let's just see. All right, it's in there. And it feels pretty good. I like that. I like that a lot. Portal just finished installing, and I think it'd be a fitting game for the first game on the Steam Deck. The speakers sound nice. The speakers sound really nice. Hello, and again, welcome to the Aperture Science Computer Aided Admission Center. Portal's such a legendary game. Excellent. Please proceed into the chamber lock after completion. It's so smooth, I don't even notice any lag, there is none. I then went ahead and tested some more games to give you an idea how the Steam Deck will run. First up was Bioshock 2 Remastered, and overall, the game ran super smooth. I didn't have to change any settings or really do anything, but just keep in mind, it doesn't make you better at the game. Let's go ahead and try out Fallout New Vegas. So this game is considered compatible with the Steam Deck and I found it had no problems playing the Steam Deck. I didn't have to change any settings, didn't have to remap any buttons, it just worked right out of the box. So you're guaranteed to have some fun Fallout shenanigans. <laughs> Next let's try out Half-Life 2. And just like you expect since it's a Valve game on a Valve handheld, it ran beautifully, no problems, didn't have to change anything, just worked with default settings. Can't complain about that. <laughs> Let's go ahead and try out another Valve classic, Left 4 Dead 2. Just like Half-Life 2, this game ran no problems at all, didn't have to change anything, just gotta get used to the controls itself. And now let's push this little thing, see how far it can go. I loaded up Resident Evil Village, and to my surprise, the game actually worked. And it's a pretty demanding game, so I was super impressed with that. Good job, Steam Deck. Next, we're gonna try the newest game I own. I'm sure it's not as demanding as Resident Evil, but we played Stray, and it ran perfect on the Steam Deck. Up next, the Stanley Parable Ultra Deluxe, and just like you would probably think, ran perfect, didn't have to change anything. Now I go ahead and try out Ziggurat. It's got Steam Deck compatibility unknown, but it ended up working perfect. Now I go ahead and try out a game called Unpossible. This one again had unknown compatibility, but from this I gathered if you've ever played a game with like a gamepad or controller and it worked, there's a good chance it's going to work on the Steam Deck. Killing Floor. This one was a little bit funky in the main menu, as in I had to use the touch screen to get past it, but once I was in game, it worked fine. Horizon Chase Turbo. This one was a little bit weird at first, I had to reset the game once, but after that first reset, it worked fine. Let's push this little thing, the Metro 2033 Redux. This is a pretty demanding game, and it honestly worked beautifully on the Steam Deck, didn't have to change anything. Mirror's Edge. This one launched kind of funny, you can see that it was like a small little screen in the corner, but when it fully booted, it was full screen, the gameplay was smooth, the controls were fine, I didn't have to change anything, and it worked perfect. Alice Madness Returns. So there's a part in the game where you shrink, and whenever you shrink, it, the screen would just cut out and go black, so there's kind of a problem on the Steam Deck, and makes the game unplayable. For Tiny and Big's Grandpa's Leftovers, I just couldn't get it to work. I couldn't get the controller to work, even with changing a bunch of settings, it just wouldn't work for me. For Hand of Fate 2, it initially gave me trouble and none of the controls would work, but after editing and remapping some of the keys, I did get it to work, so keep in mind for some games you are going to have to change some controls. There's also some nice options for performance overlay. It goes from nothing to frame rates to more information to more information and then even more information about what the system's doing. Pretty nice. 
So I noticed in the game menu, if you push X, a compatibility list shows up that will let you know if games are verified. You got verified only games. You got verified and playable games. You got verified, playable, and untested. And then you got all games. And all of those come with their own levels of is it going to work or not. All from verified games that are for sure going to work to verified, playable, and untested games that have a chance of not working. Let's check out the desktop mode. So another really cool feature of the Steam Deck that I wasn't really aware of, I knew it had possibilities, but I didn't know you could actually do it right out of the box, and that is desktop mode. There's actually like two different operating modes on the Steam Deck. This is like the Steam Deck OS mode, which makes navigating games and just playing games a more handheld and easier to use experience, but you can also change it to desktop mode by holding the power button and it's going to reveal the menu to like shut down the system. But if you go all the way down, one up from cancel, it says switch to desktop. You click that and it's going to switch it to desktop mode, which is what I think is honestly probably one of the coolest feature that this whole thing has. If you can see it just switch to desktop mode and it honestly just looks like the desktop of a computer. It's running a Linux system, so it's a Linux based computer. And I just think that's so cool. You can go ahead and install pretty much anything that could run on Linux that I'm aware of. Like I went ahead and I installed like Firefox. You can see I'm just browsing the internet. I'm actually just going to YouTube and it's pretty much a full desktop experience. It's just so wild to me that out of the box you can actually switch it to a desktop mode and you can just literally install Linux applications, you can browse the internet, you can do whatever a computer could do on this device right out of the box without really tinkering with it or doing anything with it and that to me is pretty amazing. Another example, you can go ahead and like install like VLC Media Player if you want to watch movies and stuff on here. You can install applications like Plex or applications like GIMP which is like a really powerful image editing software. You can just literally install it on your Steam Deck and if you want to work on editing images or something like that you just can go ahead. You can also still access Steam on here and it just looks like the desktop version of it. So what I want to try is I want to plug in this USB adapter right here. It goes from USB-C, which is pretty much the only port there is on the Steam Deck. And then you get a whole bunch of other ports, a couple USB ports, a USB-C port, and you also get an HDMI port as well. And they are planning on making a Steam Deck dock, which I believe is going to be a glorified one of these. That's also a stand that I'm pretty sure also has Ethernet. All right, so we're still in desktop mode. We're just going to go ahead and plug it in the top. We're going to go ahead and we're going to plug in our mouse and instantly the mouse is working on here. So let's see what happens when we plug in a keyboard. Keyboard lights up. I'm surprised it lights up and everything. And we literally have a little computer right here. <laughs> but we can do one step better. There is an HDMI port on the end of this USB adapter. So let's go ahead and try that out. And just like that, we're using this thing as if it were a desktop or laptop computer. You can change the displays, obviously. I'm extending it off of the little one, but you can really change it whatever way you want or you can have it duplicate it. But this is literally just a computer right now. I haven't liked the handheld system this much probably since like the original Game Boy Color. I think this is just so cool. It's like a system on the go, but when you get home, you can literally just plug it in and game off of it. And literally just like that, just plugging in a couple things, I'm using this as if it was like a desktop. <laughs> the sensitivity is very high right now. But I'm literally playing Bioshock on an external monitor with a keyboard and mouse on the Steam Deck. And that to me is, uh, <laughs> that's just crazy. I am so loving this system. So my overall opinion on the Steam Deck Honestly, I absolutely love this thing. I haven't been this excited about a handheld system for a really long time, probably since around the Game Boy era. The Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Advanced, DS, I love those systems and I absolutely love this thing. I'm coming from someone who's never had a Switch so I can't really compare to that, but I do have this and I absolutely love it. I would not even really consider this a console. It's more of a, just a computer that's in a really nice factory form. It's literally running Linux. You can literally run it in a desktop mode and just pl put all your desktop applications that you would have on your normal Linux computer. I believe you can even install like Windows 11 on here if you want. You can really just, it's so, so many options, but it's just such a nice factory form. It's got the joysticks, the trackpads, it's got the D-pad, the buttons, the triggers, the back buttons, 
and just a really nice form factor that can play AAA games. Like I played Stray, I played Resident Evil Village, which so I'm super impressed to play that. I played some of uh, the Metro Remastered games. I played so many games and there really wasn't many hiccups. The only time it was ever hiccups, it was when it had to do with the remapping controller buttons or it's something with compatibility where the game just didn't really like that it was being played on this and that tended to be older games. That's just my experience. I'm sure there's exceptions. I'm sure there's ways to fix it. I'm sure there's also some games that may never work on here. I don't know. And there's no way I can test them all. But for the games I played, I'd say 90% of the games worked. And I would say about 80 worked perfectly right out of the box. And I had to change about maybe 20% of the game's controls, if even. And that to me is really not that bad. And if you come from playing PC games on a computer, you're used to remapping controls. It just takes a minute to understand how it works. It's just made really well. It feels super solid. It's quiet. The, the fan really isn't that loud. I, I would not say it's loud. And it does a great job of gaming and staying cool. And it's got good sound. I'm just overall super impressed with it. I will say the thing is big. It is big and beefy, so prepare yourself for a big beefy system, but what do you expect when you're trying to run like a AAA game on here? Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hopefully it was of use. Hopefully you learned something. Hopefully it helped you decide if you want the Steam Deck or not. Just want to say thanks for stopping by. Keep on keeping on. Game on. And I'll catch you all in the next one.